What's happening, everyone? Happy Monday. Man, it has been a long, good, productive weekend and a good, productive Monday. This is your first time joining. Welcome. This is Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. So happy that you're here and tuning in. Be sure to not only share this, but engage in the comments, even if you're watching the replay later on. It's all good, and we're happy to have you here. Now, if this is your first time, let me give you a little background on the show, just so you're familiar, before we jump into the content. So, for Ed Talk TV, it's all about business, tech, and the user experience. And to make sure that we talk about pretty much anything that relates to those um, topics. Now, if you want to be a guest, you can head over later, not now, to checkwithed.com and click on the Facebook Live show. You'll be able to see more about the show, fill out a form to uh, be a guest on it, as well as uh, see previous episodes, because we have already a lot of episodes and uh, amazing guests that have been on the show to share their knowledge. So um, you can do that later afterwards. And uh, if you are catching the replay, definitely let me know that you watch the replay, because that's always fun to see uh, who shows up afterwards. And before we jump into today's topic with a special guest on storytelling for your business, I'm going to talk about random news, random facts, all that kind of stuff. We still haven't figured out a w title for this part of the uh, segment, but we'll figure it out. So yesterday, quick story, yesterday I went to uh, the Jeep dealership because I wanted to check out, you know, new new car idea for some time in the future, not anytime soon. There's other things that have to be uh, paid off and changed and all of that, but it's goals, right? It's the beginning of the year. You wanna think about uh, what goals you're gonna set for now, the next 30, 60, 90 days and plus, right? So I already got three 90 day goals set and uh, the fourth one is gonna be looking into possibly getting a new car, uh, hopefully before uh, I'm forced into it. Um, so. I went to the Jeep dealership, took a look around. You know, I told them exactly what I wanted and what I think I wanted and just straight up was like, I'm not going to be getting anything today. I just want to take a look. Now, the funny thing is when I pull into the Jeep dealership, this didn't happen, but in my head, it was funny if it would have happened. My car is old. I mean, it's 2004, so it's it's got some good years on it. And I could only imagine pulling into the Jeep dealership and as I'm doing that, the hubcap, yes, hubcap, because there's not real rims on it, the hubcap would fly off and show them that I like really needed a new car. It was funnier in my head, I know, but it's one of those things where you could just imagine pulling up to a new car dealership thinking, oh my gosh, my car just embarrassed me. It's kind of like when you go live or think about going live and you're afraid something's gonna happen where the camera drops or whatever. It is what it is. It just happens. So you just keep rolling with it, you know, no pun intended there. So anyway, that's the random, uh, random thoughts for, uh, today. But before, um, anything else, I just want you to know that, uh, I want you to jump in the comments, engage with us. I'll bring on a special guest in just a minute. We'll be talking and then, uh, we'll do our best to answer your comments live and, um, afterwards as well. So if we don't get to them during the live broadcast, We'll definitely follow up and then I'll also have our guests provide their links afterwards as well in the comments. So the magic happens in the comments. That's what we always say. So without further ado, let me switch it over and bring in our guest for today and we will go from there. And by the way, I'm using Be Live if you're not familiar with that. And let me take off solo. Hello, hello. How are you? Great to see you, Ed. Great to be here. Thank you so much, and happy Monday, happy New Year. Um, I'm honored to be to be starting this year off. I think this will be my first live video or podcast of the year. So let's let's make this amazing to get things started, huh? Awesome, awesome. Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and then we'll jump into it. I'm excited. Yeah. So my name's Kyle Gray. And I've worked for a long time helping entrepreneurs create powerful storylines that drive sales, growth, and engagement. And throughout this, this uh, working with people and working with entrepreneurs, um, I've spent a lot of time developing a process. Um, as what as you guys are going to find out um, throughout this this whole. Uh, talk is I'm very much always process oriented. I need to make sure um, that everything gets kind of like 
put into something with a beginning, middle and end and followable steps. So um, I take people through what I call the scalable storytelling process. Now it's three simple steps, um, but these, se these steps are so powerful for, for businesses and entrepreneurs in so many different ways. Step one is discover. We find out the most interesting aspects of yourself, of your story, and figure out what, what it is that your audience is really looking for, what do they need, and how do we connect your beautiful story with exactly what your audience is needing and craving and hoping that you're going to be the answer for. Step two is define. We get clear on how we want that story to be shared and we start writing it down in a way that we can share it very easily with people and very consistently with people. Finally, delegate. We help you build a creative team to help you tell your story without you having to spell, spend all day writing. So I work in a lot of storytelling and content marketing. And as you certainly know, Ed, and I'm sure many of the people watching right now, making content, making really good content, whether it's video, whether it's podcast, whether it's written, I don't care what it is. It's hard and it takes a lot of time. And not to mention having a big business or even a small business or even maybe just hopefully a business someday, doing any of those things is also hard and takes a lot of time. So how can we create content? How can we connect with our audience? How can we tell our story without getting totally bogged down in some of the more time consuming elements of it? And so it's my passion. What I love to do is simplifying things and getting freeing up entrepreneurs to tell their story in their way without bogging them down with a bunch of tasks and stuff that they need to do. You know, I just, I, I, I hate seeing people where, you know, they get all inspired with some new ideas and then they just get a list of like a hundred things that they could do better in their business. And they see the list again and they're like, oh my gosh, this is too much. I can't do any of this. And then, you know, it just becomes another graveyard of good ideas uh, or tribute to that. Um, <clears throat> So about me, how I've come through this and how I've how I kind of started down this journey of storytelling actually comes from uh, just growing up as a uh, musician. Actually, I was really I'm a guitar player. Um, I'm a songwriter. And for a long time, I was certain that the only way I was going to live a happy and fulfilled life was by um, telling great stories, by writing great songs. And uh, um, for a long time, I applied for like a performing arts school that Paul McCartney founded. And I was just like, I'm going to be a rock star or nothing else. And uh, um, <clears throat> after a while, I actually, uh, speaking of process, um, I lost passion for the process or I lost my perspective in this. I was uh, like many of us creating content. When I started picking up my guitar, I was like, I need to have a hit song written right here, right now. And then the string would break and almost whip me in the eye. Um, so approaching things with that attitude, but that's a lot of what our attitude is when we're creating content. We're like, I'm gonna have a hit blog post written right now and we publish it. And we just expect like everybody to rain and the applause and the, the search traffic to come in. Um, and it just doesn't work quite like that right off the bat. And so with guitar, I kind of, I lost, I lost my passion for it. And, and uh, it came to the point where I got just kind of stressed out, which is again, I think a lot of people feel that when trying to open up a new, you know, a new blank page to write something cool or, uh, or s start recording a new video. Um, <clears throat> over time, um, uh, over, you know, many, many years, I actually recovered this sense of purpose that I once had with music while working for a startup called WP Curve, which is, uh, um, <clears throat> a really brilliant startup started by Alex McClafferty and Dan Norris, um, that sold to GoDaddy last year for, uh, multiple seven figures. It was a really big win for them. And what I was doing was my job was to take over telling the story of the content um, a job that Dan Norris, a brilliant content marketer was doing. Um, and I just kind of got dropped in right there. I kind of felt like, I don't know, uh, I don't know the age of everybody in here, but I kind of felt like I was in the movie speed with Keanu Reeves, where he's just gotten, he's gotten the steering wheel of this bus and they're like, okay, drive this bus. Don't slow down. Uh, or it's going to explode with all these people in it. That's kind of how I felt like jumping into this new job as the as the content marketer, trying to trying to step into the shoes of this brilliant guy, a published author, 
wrote 13 blog posts in a day once and was just so good at it. And he like this, his whole, the whole startup was built around content marketing, storytelling, and that was what was driving the traffic. And so I had big shoes to fill. And at first it was really, really hard. There was a lot of back and forth. I was trying to write all of these posts and I would try to hire some writers to help me. And it was like herding cats. They were just terrible. They were terrible. And I would send them, I would send them stuff and they would just kind of like write this totally, they would go in a totally different direction with what I was, what I was hoping for. And um, there'd be just like lots of back and forth between me. I'd try to work with a writer for a while. They'd send it back to me and then I'd send it to Dan and there'd be all these problems. And, and like normally what would take just one person by themselves writing a post, it actually took like two to three times the amount of time. And so I was starting to lose a lot of, uh, I was starting to lose faith in myself um, after a while because I was like, am I going to really be able to produce uh, what, you know, the amount of content that Dan really expects. Am I going to be able to keep up with all this? I'm not sure if I can. And uh, this is when the big magic started to happen. Always in the, the darkest before the dawn kind of moment. There was, a, there was a point where I was like, I'm going to give this one more month. And if it's not working for me, then I can step away, you know, and it just, it just wasn't the right position. Whether I don't know if I'm not cut out to be an entrepreneur or a content marketer, I don't know what it is, but we're going to step away. But in this month, I was like, instead of trying to fix the people, which is what I've been doing, I was trying to fix myself, trying to be a better writer, um, or I was trying to fix the writers I was working with, I was going to fix the process. So I got really, I took a lot of time and really started listening to Dan, every little piece of feedback he gave me, and started developing these systems where they just had a step-by-step -step process of first, you look at our content strategy. Then you think about what these key things are. You piece it together. And it was everything from come up with an idea to here's how you push publish on a blog post um, and starting to create processes for every step of that. And that's when things started to click into place. It helped keep me accountable when, when I was feeling maybe stressed or had a big deadline. I had a checklist that so I didn't have to be aware of everything. And, and I had a checklist and I started sending it to the writers and the writers started, the, the back and forth between writers was instantly like done away with. And every time there was new feedback given, instead of being like, hey, writer, you kind of, you didn't quite do this right you know, and going back and forth, I just went, would go back into the process I had written out and update it. And so it would never happen again. And I also had this nice document that allowed me and my writer or me and Dan to have a much better conversation instead of being like, well, you got it kind of wrong here. We could be like, well, what about the process? Like, how can we fix the process so that this doesn't happen in the future? Sure. And so getting these systems, simple, simple systems down, it's just mostly just Google Docs. I'm only I'm only working in Google Docs here. We don't need to sign up for any hundred dollar a month software stuff. No need. Um, keep it real simple here. And that's when things started hitting the goals, started really growing, driving traffic for the blog. And best of all, most people didn't even notice that I was or that I was managing the blog and Dan wasn't anymore. They just thought, damn, it kept going. So that's that's kind of my my origin story, finding my passion again, which originally which was with telling stories through writing music, creating experiences that that changed people's lives, that gave them gave them some new ideas, and transforming that into a powerful skill that drives growth for startups and reconnecting with that with that passion I had. That's awesome. That is so crazy, and the fact that. They didn't even really, they couldn't tell the difference. I mean, that's, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was one of the best comments I've ever gotten. Sure. And, and I love the three simple steps uh, for, for those just joining it. One real quick, discover two define and three delegate. Those are huge. And those are things that we can all learn from and implement easily enough. And like Kyle said, it, you don't have to get in a fancy program. This is all simple stuff that you can do in a Google spreadsheet or a Google doc or your notepad on your phone, or if you're pen and paper only, same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love it. So what are some tips that we can do or how can we start implementing this strategy to start really store having this storytelling for business and why, 
actually, why is it even important to have a storytelling for growing your business? That's a great question. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of discussion around what storytelling is and, and why is it important for business right now? And how do we, how do we tell a better story with our businesses? And so where it starts and why it's important is because we're in an age right now um, as a marketer, I'm sure you're understanding this and I'm sure many of our people in the audience uh, will get this sense as well, but there's more and more noise than ever. Um, and it's only gonna get worse, folks. There's only gonna be more Facebook ads. They're only gonna get more invasive. Um, there's, you know, we're seeing, we're, we're getting bombarded with messages all the time these days. And for most of us, um, you know, we're, we've gotten pretty desensitized to a lot of the stuff we're seeing. It doesn't really resonate with us. So there's more information out there than ever. There's more noise out there than ever. But the one really, truly rare resource that we have is not knowledge, not information, but it's trust. It's somebody, well, I'm tapping my heart, can't really see it, but it's trust. You need to be able to not only get good information or see information, but you want to have a relationship with somebody. You want to have a human connection that builds on trust that you can be like, I really know this person and I really feel like they have my best interests in mind. And by telling a story, by sharing who you are, what your roots are, where you're coming from, why are you doing this? Why are you in this business? Why do you care about this? Why do you care about these people? And these are questions that amazingly almost nobody even asks themselves or, or does work to define, um, which is actually one of the, <clears throat> one of the best reasons why uh, I love doing what I do because I love like pulling these, these interesting things out of people. But once you get clear on that, that's the foundation for how you can build that trust. People wanna know, like if you are, you know, maybe you're, you're a, a hunter from Montana and you see, you know, you see just the nature as, as part of like how you visualize how you're going through, you know, the business world or something like that. That's a very random example, but you want to connect your roots and who you are to really what you're doing right now. Similar to what I just did talking about how I started playing guitar and was a musician and loved all that and thought that that was my path. And now you can see, wow, well, storytelling and copywriting and content, he's been writing stuff for a long time and and uh, it brings it in fresh or brings it in a little bit differently. And I like guitars too, or I like music too, so I can connect with that. Um, there's there's something I want to explain that I think storytelling does a really good job at, and, and it's a good framework to kind of get started understanding how all of these pieces fit together. It's called the buyer's journey. And again, it's a simple, it can be portrayed in three or four steps. Let's just talk about three to keep it simple today. And the three steps in the buyer's journey are know, like, and trust. And so <clears throat> you need to take people through these three steps before they're going to be your customer. And how does that work? First, they need to know you. And basically they just need to be aware that you exist. And they also need to be aware that the problem that you solve is their problem or that they have a problem at all. For example, um, and if you wanna overcome these challenges, um, <clears throat> sometimes people don't even know that they have a problem. For example, um, I have a, uh, a thyroid disease and, uh, it's, it's a very, now that I know I have a thyroid disease, I pay, I'm very happy to pay a lot of money to figure it out. But for a long time, I didn't know I had it. I didn't have it diagnosed. And so I felt kind of weird and I felt kind of bummed sometimes and you know, stuff was happening, but, uh, but I wasn't like, oh, well, there's something weird kind of wrong with me, but it, but I wasn't even in the no section, if that makes sense out there, I wasn't aware. And so I wasn't ready to take action. I wasn't ready to research. And so you want to, um, first make sure that your, your audience is aware of the problem and aware that you exist at all. And so once we get through that, then they, they know that you exist, but they're like, well, there's a hundred other competitors out there, just like this person. Why do I like them more? And this is really where you start to, this is where your authenticity comes in. This is like, this is my style. You know, I like this or I'm, you know, I have more fun doing what I do or I am more data driven. This is where you really start to define what's unique about you compared to your competition. And this is where story is very powerful and um, creating a story around what you do, your process, your business, how you approach things.
building in story right there is what will separate you from hundreds of other uh, competitors out there. And finally, trust. They need to know that not only, okay, they know you exist now and they like you, but they need to know that you can really deliver what you are promising you'll deliver. And more importantly, you can deliver what they need or what they are really feeling and wanting. And so we need to understand how we can tell a story that will build that kind of trust and show embed within the story how you get your results and have them start visualizing themselves in the shoes of your customer, um, getting that, getting those results and just making sure that whatever money it is that they invest in the first place, they come away feeling like it's been the best investment of their life. And so doing that, connecting that with story can be really, really powerful. Not only, not only are you going to create um, audience members who are happier, uh, who are more engaged with what you're doing, they're better customers, but by having a good story and connecting with a, re a good reason why um, you're doing what you're doing and who you are, and it, it gives people something bigger to participate in. It's no longer just, wow, Ed's really cool. You know, he, he posts the best memes on Facebook. It's like, wow, Ed's trying to do something really important. He, he sees the world differently than a lot of people. And he's not, he's not just doing this to grow a business. He's doing this because he truly cares about the people he's talking to and truly loves doing this. And so I want to trust him compared with, with these other people. And so um, that's kind of the power that story can have inside of this, this uh, framework called the buyer's journey. It will carry people through each step in a unique and powerful way and really create customers and uh, also change how you show up every day. Um, just having a good story and having a good reason why gives you more energy to get out of bed in the morning and solve the big problems of your business. It really does. And you know, this, uh, I have a posted actually, uh, of this quote that I'll read in a second that it showed up in a Facebook group. Um, I think it, it's the screw the nine to five, uh, Facebook group. They have a page as well, but they're awesome. And, um, this one quote that Josh Stanton had said was one that is the only post-it quote that's on my actual, um, display here. And it says, quote, people come for the content and stay for the community. And that's yeah. a huge one for me because that that's a big one and it should be for everyone now is that that's the reason why people stick around is for the community, what you bring to the table and how are you standing out? How are you making it different? You know, there's, you know, I always say when people are worried about competition, it's like, well, how many nail salons, how many massage places, how many uh, restaurants, like all these places, there's, there's multiple ones of them but somehow they're still surviving on their own individually because they have something unique that they're bringing to the table. So the same has to ha happen for us for online businesses as well. Absolutely. And so uh, I think the good place, a good place to, that I start with people is really finding those, those things. Like how do we, how do we make ourselves unique and, and what are we bringing to the table and, and, and why am I, you know, like, why am I excited? And so there's a couple of, there's a couple of simple tools that I like to start with, with people that are not only useful in the fact that they are things that you can take and use immediately in your business, but they're also powerful in the way that uh, they, they get you thinking about your business and it starts to really bring out the, the gold inside of you. And so <clears throat> there's a couple of these tools. So the first one, I like to call it a lean in line. And so it's basically an elevator pitch. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, that's the end goal we want to create. Basically, if we were, if we were just meeting at a conference right now and yeah. uh, somebody was like, and of course, you know, imagine yourselves, we've all been to a bunch of conferences before. And one of the things that is so amazing about conferences is that people go to these all the time. We're all entrepreneurs at these conferences and we're all working and thinking on our businesses and we all get so excited to come to these events and we do and we show up and we meet people and we're terrible at talking about our business somehow, yeah. somehow. 
all of that. And then I'll show up, like I'll show up. I mean, so uh, if you guys have been here since the beginning, like think about what I said earlier or versus me, like, you know, a year ago when I was talking about my business, I'd be like, well, I help people, you know, create good documents that uh, are style guides and each step of the style guide illustrates how wide each pixeled image should be to be published on the WordPress site and make sure that it's SEO configured, all of these things. And that's like, when people hear that, they're just like, Ugh. what you wanna be able to say right away, just in a nice, crisp, one sentence way, is just like, this is who I am, this is who I serve, and this is how I solve their problem. And this is, you know, maybe even add in what, what they really want. So again, like coming back to, to uh, my own, I help entrepreneurs create a powerful storyline for their business that drives sales, growth, and engagement. So can we templatize this? Yes. So I help blank who you help, which is surprisingly difficult to figure out sometimes. It actually takes a lot of work to define that who. Um, and then the next blank is what do you do or what do you give them or what's your solution for their business? And then not only you don't only want to say like, what's the solution, what problem you solve, but you want to give them a little hint at like, what are they going to get now that the problem's solved? Like, you know, do you want to, <clears throat> this is also kind of a, a silly example, but like, you know, when you're selling like six pack abs to somebody, you don't want to be like, you're going to have six pack abs just so you can have six pack abs. Nobody wants, nobody wants them just to, they are like, you want to have six pack abs so you can go out on the beach and you look real good and everybody's looking at you. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's how it works. So then you add in the little bit of like, so that this person can go to the beach and look really good if that makes sense. So if we can put that all together in one sentence, and again, it's just something super useful and super practical that um, just by going through the process, we discover a lot about you and we start to build in all of these, these great details of your story. But it also gives you something that you can go to a conference and now just have this one little line that you remember um, to say every time somebody's like, well, what do you do? And again, like I didn't say anything about saying I'm a content marketer, I'm a copywriter or any of those kind of things. It just gave them enough to be like, that's kind of interesting. Will you tell me a little bit more? Yes. That's all we want. That's all we want. So that's all. That's first round, round one. If we can get that done, then you, you did good. Um, <clears throat> and let me interrupt. Another, real quick. I yeah. want to make sure that I wrote this right because I typed it in the comments. So I said, I help blank what do you give them blank for their business so that blank is that kind of a rough template there yeah yeah okay. as long as as long as we make sure the the blanks are right but if you were if you're listening in paying attention you know just make sure that and this is this is a tough process like once you understand your who you've got to really figure out what they really want and and you can't just figure out what they really want but you got to figure out what the words are they use when they describe what they want. Um, That's which is, one. Uh, very tricky. Yeah, it takes a while. Um, yeah. So it's. And that's the one where I tell people the. That's why I say magic happens in the comments because that's where if you ask and you listen, and part of that listening is reading those responses, you can pick up those words that those people that those people you're trying to reach are using, and that's the beauty of Facebook. Facebook groups, uh, if you're on mm -hmm. Instagram or Twitter or whatever other social media platform, like just ask those questions and listen to whatever response you get. You may get none, you may get one, five, it doesn't matter. But when you listen to those responses and you read through, and you can even read through other questions that people ask and that the answers that they get, you may not even have to ask your question, but you have to start paying attention more and going with the intent of, you're going to be looking for this now. And so that way then you can pull that information and use it in these, uh, in this statement and in your business. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, yeah, so that's one of the foundations and that's one of the things that, uh, yeah, it's often overlooked in storytelling as well is, is the research. It's not just, I mean, most of us have hundreds and hundreds of stories to choose from, um, but you've got to pick to tell the ones that are really going to connect with exactly what you were just talking about there. You want to pick, but you want to tell the stories that are going to inspire and engage people. Um, 
in in <clears throat> that. And so, yeah, there's definitely it's a co-creative process. Your story isn't just your own, but it's also what your your audience's story is. You want you want your story. You want your hero's journey, which is a different framework. Um, and I've got links to buyer's journey and hero's journey infographics. You guys are going to get spoiled out um, so much at the end of this. So don't you worry. Um, <clears throat> but like your hero's journey, you're getting it, uh, going through your process and telling your story should mirror what um, your audience needs to go through. They need to be able to put themselves in your shoes and follow you through your story and imagine themselves experiencing all of these things so that they arrive at the same conclusion you have, which is I'm the best person to help you with your problem. Yep. That's, that's key. And that, that's a big one. And, and really sometimes you just have to step back from your business for a minute and breathe and think about just your story and understanding, you know, why you got into it, you know, for, I'll be vulnerable and let you guys know that for uh, a while I started at first, the reason I got into business was because obviously I want to help more people. But the biggest part that I started with was building websites. Now I'm not a coder, but I can work with templates and I can do WordPress. Like that's one that I really am decent at, which is a problem for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. I didn't at the beginning, because of course, when, when you're just starting out, you're, you're doing everything you can. I didn't really focus entirely just on that. I had all these other things that I offer and stuff. Well, now it's so clear that that's what I have to focus on. And the more niche down I can get, the more narrow I can get on what I offer with that and how I offer that and the story behind it, that's the key. And like for me, the reason I got into it in the first place was not because I was like, ah, oh, I just am in love with websites. I mean, I kind of am, but it, it really was <laughs> out of uh, passion for helping people not get screwed over from mm -hmm. the wild, wild web because so many people were getting really crappy websites that they spent thousands and thousands of dollars on where I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this isn't even that good. And I could build something for way less and much easier for you to use, you know? And so that's more my story and wanting to not only figure out the tech, but also figure out how I can make it easier for the average person to not get screwed over. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. And, and uh, I hope that, you know, people will see that and resonate. I mean, I have no doubt that they are resonating with that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, another good storytelling tool, uh, speaking of which of like what you are doing and, and how you're doing is, is not just talking, not just being able to introduce like what we do in an interesting and engaging way that gets people to lean in a little bit, but it's being able to talk about how we get the results that we get in a in a way that's really clear and instead of again getting getting muddled down in the in the nitty-gritty like talking about you know i'm going to use i'm going to install these these here plugins on your site um nobody wants to hear that yeah. um <clears throat> it's about talking about your process in a way that points towards results and again helps people visualize you working with them and so again let's let's break down uh, my own process a little bit. So it's a scalable storytelling process. And one thing I like about it, and, and one thing that you could do in your own process too, is it's three steps. And then that's very important is like three is a magic number. If you can do things, do all things in threes, um, especially when it comes to marketing or storytelling or describing who you are, because it's very easy for us to remember uh, three step processes, especially if we can alliterate them, which means uh, having the first letter in the <clears throat> in the word always be uh, the same. But uh, yeah, so you want to create a little bit of a you want to show them how you get the results that you get and walk them through that process. So again, when I say discover, we find the most interesting aspects of your story. So again, I'm pointing at a result. I'm pointing at we're, we're uncovering the gold inside of you. We're not saying, well, we're gonna sit down for a couple of hours and I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions and then scribble on a paper for a while and then figure out what's gonna happen in there. That's not what they wanna hear. They wanna see, oh, the interesting aspects of my story, like what connects with my audience? Okay, like uh, uh, tell me more. 
and then define. We get clear on how we want that story to be shared and put it into a, a simple system that makes it easy to share. That's again, instead of being like, well, I'll, I'll write out a bunch of documents in Google Docs that you can use for X, Y, and Z. It's like, we make it easy to share your story. We remove all of that pain that you feel when you try to hire a writer and they it doesn't even seem like they wrote a blog post in English for you. Um, and then finally, uh, delegate. Again, it's like being able to hand that off, being able to hand off some, some difficult tasks. It's delegate. Ah, that feels so much better. There's so much pain off of me to focusing on results. So how can you create your own process and connect it with one of the great things about a process is you can connect it with your story, connect it with who you are, bringing in um, <clears throat> your own personal storyline and, and just having like the magic, the magic process that you do and giving it its own name. And this separates you again from the hundreds of other uh, competitors because there's tons of people who are copywriters and there's no way that I'm going to be able to compete, um, you know, just trying to say I'm a copywriter among 10,000 others. But if I say I've got the scalable storytelling process and I know how to make it easy for you to tell your story without spending all day writing, that's a very unique and powerful take on copywriting, on content marketing that not everybody's addressing. So by building in a process that walks people through what you do, helps them imagine themselves in the shoes of your customer and gives them something to visualize and, and, <clears throat> and work with is very, very powerful and very, very uh, strong for your own storytelling. That is powerful. I love that. And, and that's a big one. Walk people through what you do and just let them paint that picture for them. And, and that, you know, is huge. I have a friend who, uh, she, she doesn't do this for her business, but she can write in a way that the minute you start reading the words, you, you can see the picture. It's like a movie and just her writing is amazing. And that's like, wow, you just wrote that and I, I'm visualizing every single word and it's amazing what that can do for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> there's one other really good one that, that ties in a lot with, with content marketing and uh, creating great content online. Um, and that's, that's having goals for your business. And, and some people call this a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I honestly hate that name but it's a great sticky proprietary process. So I'm gonna, I'll hat tip, even though I hate the name. It's yeah. a good one. Um, so what a big, hairy, audacious goal can be is just like a really, uh, you're aiming really high for your business and it's, it, sets, it sets a bigger purpose than we're gonna make this much money this year. It's like, I wanna help 1 million people uh, impact a billion people by telling better stories with their business. I want to help raise $10 million because people are telling better stories or something like that by creating, by creating this small or not so small at all, actually goal that you want to aim for in your business. Um, what this does is this creates that thing that's bigger than yourself. Instead of just selling Kyle, instead of just selling Ed, you've got this big vision that I want to take this business and I really want to impact a lot of people's lives with it. And this is what that's going to look like. And what that does for people, what that does for your customers is again, they're like, okay, well, Ed's just not trying to get my money because he just wants to get my money. He's got this vision. Um, and I like this vision too. Like I, this is something I care about and I'm passionate about it. If I work with him, then I get to play my part in this vision. I get to, I get to contribute to that a little bit. Um, and so it creates a different kind of conversation to have. And best of all, you can be, if it's measurable, um, which I think it absolutely should be, be really specific. If you say 10 million people, you mean it and you start measuring it, um, you know, starting today. And uh, what I've seen a lot of great sites um, that do this and start talking about their stories and what they're doing, for example, Groove HQ. Groove is a uh, GrooveHQ.com. That is a uh, software as a service that does customer support. And one thing I love about their blogs is this is actually a money-based goal. So it's 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 a little bit 
goes against what I was just saying, but it's a, it's a good example of this. They have like a little thermometer at the bottom of their blog roll that shows their, their goal to make X amount of monthly recurring revenue. And it goes up over time. And you also, as you scroll down through your blo their blog posts, it works like a timeline where you they they not only show the most recent blog post they've published, but they have in little little like ticks where they were like, we hit four hundred thousand a month here, uh, we hit X hundred thousand you know a month there, and so you're following along with them, and you can also see their graphs starting to turn up. And so if you have a goal like this that's measurable, then it gives you something, it gives you more content to create because you can be like, okay, well this month I did all these things to achieve this goal and I've gone from 10 people to 100 people of my 10 million people that I wanna impact because I did X. And you start talking about this and people will people come back. They wanna see the story that it's unfolding. They wanna see your big goals. They wanna see you, they believe in you and they wanna see you achieve them. Whether they're a customer, whether they're an ally of your business, whether they're not a customer at all, and they're not even a good fit, but maybe someday somebody is gonna walk up to them and be like, man, I really need somebody to help me with storytelling. And oh, I know just the guy. I've been reading his blog for years. Um, <clears throat> So having that big goal that you can report on, that you can share on, that you can make a core of your business is, is going to be very, very powerful content creation. Keep people coming back. That was one of the most valuable things I created at WP Curve were the WP Curve monthly reports. Now, I didn't come up with this concept. I just continued on with what Dan had, but really creating these and telling the story of how the company was growing and unfolding um, was very, very powerful. And... And not only is it going to change, again, how your customers work with you, but um, our, your team members are going to get excited. Um, they're going to see the progress. They're going to see these goals. They're going to enroll themselves, too. You're going to get more loyal team members that are going to stick around, that aren't going to be poached by, by whoever just offers them a little bit of higher salary. Um, and they're going to, you're also going to attract more people, too your business. You're not just attracting customers, but you could be attracting your future team members who are so inspired by your vision that they have to quit their normal job to come work for you because they're just so excited about what you're doing and who you are. And those are obviously like, if you can get people like that, that makes recruiting so much nicer. It makes the next hire. Oh man, you sometimes you don't even need to go through the whole hiring process as somebody who just shows up at your door and they're like, oh my God, I love what you're doing so much. Just tell me, point me at whatever I need to do. Just tell me, tell me what I can do for you. I'll do it for free for a while. You know, I can't expect like, you can't expect always this, these kind of things to happen, but with story and with a vision and with something powerful, you stand a much better chance at it than if you're just posting top 10 uh, ways to do better SEO in in 2018 articles, which are great articles too. get you some good keyword research, but it's not, it's not going to get you this, the, the story power that I feel like a lot of people are missing out on and a lot of people want to see more of in the coming years. Oh, for sure. And I can tell you and everyone watching that that is so huge. Like I have been doing a lot more live video as you guys who have been watching know. I mean, now it's Monday through Friday. And just since the last month or so, I've just stepped up this live broadcasting game 10 times, if not more. And what's been crazy is my engagement has gone up. My views, not that I really care about the views part, but those have gone up. Those numbers have gone up. Um, also, people that I run into, both online and in real life, over at the store and stuff, that know me, of course, because um, I'm not, not famous like that, but uh, they are saying, Ed, you're everywhere. Like yesterday, I got a message on Facebook Messenger. Somebody was letting me know that I know I haven't talked to him for a while because we used to work together and it's been a while. Hit me up on Facebook Messenger and was like, you're killing it. I'm seeing you everywhere online. You're doing this, that, you know, here's a couple uh, of two, my two cents for X, Y, Z. And, and it's just like, wow, like you don't realize because I'm just showing up and delivering. Like I tell you guys, have a topic up to three talking points, show up, deliver, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And that that by itself has gone so much further in my business. And people are attracted to that. 
they're seeing my work, they're interacting more. I've had um, a local client reach out to me with just seeing one of my Facebook lives where I, I don't sell anything. They're just reached out to me to see if I'd be interested because they liked who I, who I was on camera. They liked what I brought to the table. So it's huge. And I know a lot of you watching this, even on the replay, you're what I call secret followers, right? You show up and you just watch and that's okay. That's great. But I want you in 2018 to grow. So I want you to start taking the next step. Like some of you, you've commented, that's the next step. Then you're gonna start showing those emotions, like using the heart, um, if you're on Facebook here. Um, you're gonna start sharing, because remember, once you share or comment, you're putting yourself out there and you're starting the conversation. Both of those things will start the conversation. And then from there, you're gonna start working your way up to going live. I said it. You're going to go live, whether that's audio on Facebook, doing that through your mobile device or going through live video. At some point, you're going to do that and you're going to get there. We'll work together on getting you there. But I want you to start small. Um, like I put in the comments, um, my favorite method is the BSQ method, which is think big, act small, move quickly. So thinking big, I want you guys to think about going live and then work small work quickly with those small goals like showing up commenting sharing getting that engagement going and then work up to that live performance audio whatever you want to call it so anyway that, that's my two cents on that part <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's 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 inspired me now you're i i don't do uh any live on my own stuff but just just that i was like gosh i need to do some bsq <laughs> Well, and see, and it's funny that you mentioned that because that's been happening a lot. And that's why I love bringing on guests on the show here. And because it helps both of us. It, that way, it's not so intimidating with just one person. But then the other thing, too, is that um, I'm also working on trying to figure out a way of, you know, uh, monitoring slash having this goal of how many people can I impact with that? How many people can I help inspire? You know, I had somebody um, tag me on my personal Facebook when they went live for the first time because I encouraged them and somebody else um, she had tagged as well. And I was like, what? This isn't spam. This is real. Like, this is awesome. This is so good. So, you know, it's that kind of stuff that you really want to work with. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. And that's exciting. I'm, I, uh, I can't wait to see, yeah, all the new live shows that spin up from your your following it and uh and just just so anybody watching knows i think that it's it's worth saying that we actually met on a on a live stream not too long ago and it was because um i was i was joining uh kim doyle on a live stream and ed was was eating his own dog food that he was sharing with you guys today he is in the arena for sure he was commenting like crazy asking really good questions and it was so exciting that at the end uh we we connected right away and we've we've already started collaborating as as a result and so um you know good th good things have come just just from a couple of small comments and i i would really encourage you guys to yeah definitely engage in every way you can and yeah taking taking one little risk you know just to say just to at least appreciate it or um yeah following ed's suggestions they're so powerful and it does take a lot of courage. I totally admit. I remember for several years, like being a member of like an online forum that I paid for. And I was scared to post anything for a while because I was like, no, people are just going to be so mad at me for like asking the same question or whatever. And it just, just you've got to like take some courage and, and, and uh, get past it. Because I promise you, it's going to be worth, worth every, you know, every ounce. Oh yeah, and and the you know the the thing about lives too for those who are watching is that yes, it's scary at first, but now it's like now in my head the only thing that I'm worried about is my facial expressions, which is something I'm going to try to work on, you know, because it's like being on TV. You have to you have to play with that. You have to understand and you you guys have seen me, you know, you look I look down because I'm on the phone trying to heart it up and comments mm -hmm. there. I'm browsing up the comments on my screen. There's a lot going on. So in my head, the most important part is looking at the camera and making sure that I'm not like the, in this weird face. 
but that's it. Mm -hmm. And if I am, oh, well, like it is what it is, but it's, it's the content that we're coming for, right? It's the content yeah. and the community that we're building here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Kyle, any, uh, any last things you want to wrap up with? I know you'll put your links in the comments for everyone, but um, any other last pieces of advice before uh, I let you go here? Whew. What would be a great last thing uh, to do? I think start, uh, this is a, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of this guy, but uh, Simon Sinek, start with why I think he's right. I think you really need to start thinking about why you're doing what you're doing and really, really get down, get down in the, in the weeds for this. And really like, why are you passionate about this? Why have you chosen? And what, what about your story? Even if this is a brand new business, even if you're starting a brand new skill, you have your whole life of stories behind you and your whole life of experience that you can bring to the table. And there's something unique inside of you that's brought you here to this moment, to this business, um, to the customers that are standing before you. And so uh, start with getting clear on why you're doing what you're doing. And that's going to mean a world of difference if you can if you can understand that and you can create a story for yourself if you can create a why for yourself that gets you excited that's that's the, this needs to start with yourself you need to believe in yourself you need to you need to follow this story and be excited about it and that's where the magic happens and that that's so that's where i would start i love it i love it and uh i'm totally putting you on the spot but any good book that you've read that you would recommend for people that are wanting to look up a book? There's a really, I like Wired for Story by Lisa Cron, C-R-O-N. Okay. She, it's more fiction based, but it's uh, it's amazing for just telling stories and telling things in, in good characters. There's so many little good tips that you can use though it's, though it's meant for fiction writers in writing great content or videos or whatever, whatever you need to do. Nice, awesome. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Feel free to jump in the comments, pop in those links for us uh, so people can find you and uh, whatever other good uh, links that you have for us. And then uh, hopefully yeah. we'll have you on the show again soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Ed. It's a big honor. I really, uh, I really appreciate it and I had a great time tonight. So thank you for doing what you're doing. You're a fantastic host. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for checking in and listening. And uh, I'm excited to start up some conversations with you guys in the comments. I've tried, just like what Ez was saying, I've been trying to focus on the, the camera and the conversation. But I'm excited to meet with you guys and chat with you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kyle. We'll talk soon. See you, Ed. Bye-bye. You guys, how awesome was that, right? This is what it's all about. It's all about being able to connect. Just have that conversation. That's what social media is about. That's what this online business world is all about. Now, since you stayed tuned to the end, I'm going to show you actually one, um, one website that I came across actually a while back, but I forgot about it. And I just came back to it today talking about stats and like, you know, seeing your numbers and things like that. Um, because that's part of that goal that we talked about. Right. And actually I didn't even know we were going to talk about that in the show. So this is awesome that it ties in. So later, be sure to read through the comments. I'll post it on the blog post uh, uh, on the blog as well, checkwithed.com. But let me go ahead and share um, this with you. Dash, Dasher O, so it's D-A-S-H-E-R-O-O.com. It's one place for you, and I'll put that link in the comments. It's one place for you to um, sign up for free and you're able to, and I'm not affiliated with them, I'm just sharing this as a tool. But this is a place where you can actually um, go to have a free account and open up your Facebook, your Instagram, your Pinterest. There's a bunch of other ones that you can do there and kind of have an overview of your stats just so that way you have one clean place to look and kind of keep an eye on. Because remember, you know, you just want to know about them. You don't want to be so focused on like, like for me, it's not about the numbers. It's about the relationships and building those relationships. So really understand that and know that the numbers are just there to kind of guide you and help you understand maybe what you should do more of, maybe what you should do least of. But don't get so focused on, I only have so many live viewers. I can't ever go live again. Or I had no live viewers. I can't go again. No. 
You just show up and you deliver. That's your only job. Show up and deliver. Everything else is just extra, right? So just keep that in mind and really um, pay attention to the comments. Really start engaging there. And I hope that this inspired you and I hope that you'll keep tuning in Monday through Friday. If you want to be a guest, head over to checkwithed.com after this and um, request to be a guest because I'd love to have you on the show. And jump into the comments. We'll talk to you over there. Take care, guys.